Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go again. I mean, these guys are busy in space, aren't they? I mean, if you look at the whole scene, the show, it's quite active. But what is real and what isn't? Rockets are real. People have seen rockets take off into the sky beyond their sight and beyond that. It's cameras and communication. So yeah, everything on the ground is real. Satellites are real and I have no doubt that space stations are real. Beyond that, we can see the sun, the moon, the stars. And quite often, we have rocks falling out of the sky. That's real too. Now we can use equipment to zoom in on those objects in the sky to study them. Any one of us can do that. We can also make calculations based on what we can observe. Now here's the problem. If you wanted to go beyond what we can observe here on the ground, you would have to use the eyes and ears of a satellite or probe. But the only people who would have control of the data would be people who have access to those satellites or mission probes. And once you launch something into space onto the surface of the moon or asteroid or Mars, now the data we receive is only what they feed us. So yes, anything they show us happening on the moon could have been a complete hoax. Anything they show us happening on Mars could be completely faked. However, it may be possible to eavesdrop on the transmission. So recently they've discovered more water on Mars. Big surprise, right? And we are going to take a closer look at this sift through the information and sort this out because as we know when questioning the narrative of the space agency there is never a straight answer Orbiter discovers significant amounts of water in Grand Canyon-like area of Mars. A researcher orbiter circling around Mars has discovered significant amounts of water underneath the surface of an area on the red planet similar to the Grand Canyon, according to the European Space Agency. The orbiter, the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, was launched by the European Space Agency along with the Russian Space Agency in 2016 and has been orbiting Mars ever since with the goal of learning more about the gases and the possibility of life on the planet. So what happened was they had this orbiter scanning an area of Mars called the Valles Marineris, a canyon, which they say is four times deeper and ten times longer than the Grand Canyon. It would actually be the length of the United States. This is a canyon that is located on the or near the equator of Mars, which according to them makes it a bit too warm for ice. So the water that they found is deep in the center of this canyon, but they say they are not sure what form the water is in. The article states that the scientists are unsure whether the detected water is ice or water bound to soil, but they are leaning more towards it being ice as permafrost. They aren't sure whether there is a river down there or permafrost or what have you. They'll keep us posted. So here's some more of that future faking I was talking about. At the same time, they have these rovers on Mars collecting rock samples that they plan to send spacecraft to go pick up and bring back to Earth for further analysis. There are two things here. First, they want you to believe that they are going to continue this mission for years to come and will stand by waiting for their new discoveries for years to come. Second, 
it seems as though they are trying to slowly disclose life on Mars. Every time I turn around, Mars is becoming more and more like Earth. Polar ice caps, water canyons, pyramids, volcanoes, clouds in the sky, blue skies. I've never heard of anything like these vehicles not needing a person to maintain these machines. Because they are machines on another planet being remote controlled. I mean, if this is real, that is beyond impressive. I'm convinced we found evidence of life on Mars in the 1970s. On July 30th, 1976, the LR returned its initial results from Mars. Amazingly, they were positive. As the experiment progressed, a total of four positive results, supported by five varied controls, streamed down from the twin Viking spacecraft landed some 4,000 miles apart. The data curves signaled the detection of microbial respiration on the red planet. The curves from Mars were similar to those produced by LR test of soils on Earth. It seemed we had answered that ultimate question. When the Viking molecular analysis experiment failed to detect organic matter, the essence of life, however, NASA concluded that the LR had found a substance mimicking life, but not life. Inexplicably, over the 43 years since Viking, none of NASA's subsequent Mars landers has carried a life detection instrument to follow up on these exciting results. Instead, the agency launched a series of missions to Mars to determine whether there was ever a habitat suitable for life and, if so, eventually to bring samples to Earth for biological examination. Now, after reading that, what does that sound like to you? It sounds like they've already discovered life on Mars back in the 70s and just covered it up. Why? Was it too soon to disclose that discovery? I don't know, it just seems as though they have been pretending to make discoveries of things they already know are there. So, even if everything they are showing us is real, it's still ultimately all a lie if they are hiding things and withholding information. There are people out there who are like Batman when it comes to the detective work behind all things Mars. And what they are suggesting is that this is all just 100% fake. Let's put the theory of flat Earth to the side for a moment and just focus on what we know to be Mars. There is a huge mixture of fact and fiction here. But one of the concerns here is the amount of resources put into these projects. Money. Because the truth is, most people on the planet don't really care. They are not walking around thinking about Mars. To most people... Mars is just a light in the sky. It's only news to people who look deeper into this stuff. Go ahead and try to talk to a stranger about Mars. They'll think you're from Mars. How many of you have heard of Devon Island? I'm sure many of you watching now absolutely have. But for those of you who may have heard of it or don't know much about it, if there was a place anywhere in the world that you would use as a Mars backdrop, it's Devon Island. This is an uninhabited island in the Arctic archipelago in Canada. Most, if not all of the ground there, stays frozen all year long. A third is ice capped. However, about 45 to 50 days out of the year, there is no snow. So what you have is this wasteland of scattered rocks with an annual temperature of minus 16 degrees Celsius. No plants, no animals. Now in 2001, and you may find this fascinating, a group of researchers wanted to study how humans might live and work on other planets like Mars. So they started the Houghton Mars Project on Devon Island. It is operated by the Mars Society and funded by NASA, of course. 
And this is all done at a research base called FMARS, the Flashline Mars Arctic Research Station. And this station is in a 23-kilometer diameter crater that was formed some 39 million years ago when a 2-kilometer projectile hit the Earth there. The impact was so great it brought rocks that were buried up to the surface. And because everything there is frozen, no running water, there's very little erosion or weathering, the area always looks relatively the same. This photo, of course, is not a photo of Mars. It's Devon Island. But it looks awfully similar to the photos they show us of Mars. Looking at this also makes you feel like, you know what? If they wanted, they sure could fake everything that is going on on Mars right there at Devon Island. So let me let you guys in on a little secret for those of you who are highly skeptical about these Mars missions. Or for those of you who don't even believe Mars is a planet and just a light in the sky. There is a way to know if there are indeed rovers and missions taking place on Mars. There are two things to consider and investigate. First thing is transmissions. From Earth to Mars, or should I say from Mars to Earth. You would probably need a large disk antenna, but you would be looking for signals coming from Mars at the rise and set of Mars. You could triangulate the distance to the source, and over time, listening in on the signals, you could decode them. This was done in the 60s by an engineer using a homemade radio telescope to listen in on transmissions from the Apollo moon missions to Earth. Of course, this would take some pretty seasoned technical skills, but it could be done. Next, there is something that is often overlooked. And that is the rockets. The rockets are definitely real. And they are definitely being launched into the sky. And not only are they being launched into the sky, but there are people, a few people, but there are people who will track that rocket using telescopes and monitoring station equipment. And they will watch the rocket travel up out of the atmosphere into space all the way to Mars, watching the rocket the whole trip, and watch as the craft drops something off. People can verify this, folks, and the space agency knows that they can. So to send an empty craft all the way to Mars to pretend to drop off a payload and act out the rest here on Earth seems to be going a bit out of your way to fool people and waste of their own time and resources, right? So at the end of the day, I don't rule out that these Mars missions are real. However, I do believe that what they are showing us and what they are telling us is only a tiny, tiny fraction of what is actually there. There is more to come, more to explore. Stay tuned. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at jwoodward. I have quite a few more things to discuss before the year is out. But until then, my friends, as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe. God bless you and your families, and I'll talk to you all soon.